Hey everyone, I'm April. I'm the owner and creator over at Tis So Sweet. I make custom bags, purses, totes, zipper pouches, and other unique handmade items. I love all things Disney and absolutely enjoy making bags that bring joy to your heart and a smile to your face. If you would like to follow me in my shop, you can find me over on Instagram at Tis So Sweet. I'd love to connect with you and get to know you. Now that we've gotten to know each other some, I would like to welcome you to our Sewing 101 series here on Auntie Tay's YouTube channel. In this series, we will be going over the basics. I'm talking from the ground up. We will be going over how to navigate your sewing machine, how to read a basic sewing pattern, basic sewing lingo, and so much more. So with all that being said, let's get sewing. In today's video, we're gonna be going over basic machine stitches. So the machine that I have in front of me today is the Singer MX60. You can see on the dial that there's several different icons that show up here. These all represent the different stitches that it can do. These three are the straight stitches. These four are what they would call the zigzag stitches. Then you have your blind hem stitch and a pretty decorative stitch. And then these three right here are part of the four step buttonhole system that this machine has. Now, each machine is different. So you're gonna want to go to your machine, look at your dial and check out the different stitches that it has available. As you may know, there are several different types of machines that are out there. So another machine that I have is a straight stitch only. That means it only goes in a straight line. Nothing pretty, nothing fancy. It just sews a straight stitch. So now we're going to walk through the stitches that are on this machine. So on the Singer MX60, we have three different straight stitches. You see how the dotted lines are small, medium, and large. This is the size of your stitch. So the smaller stitches you'll want for your seams, for stuff that's gonna be on the inside that you want it to hold pretty tight. As you get to the longer stitch, that is more for your top stitching and um, different things like that. Something that's going to be seen on your bag, on your garment, on the outside. These longer stitches are also for holding things lightly in place. So if you wanna look at it like that, the smaller stitches hold it tightly in place, the longer stitches hold it lightly in place. Now the purpose for holding things lightly in place is to, let's say, baste stitch. That's something just to baste it on, basically like taping it on, but with stitches. I personally use this technique when I'm working with zippers. So when I'm attaching the zipper to the lining of my bag, the inside of my bag, I'm going to baste it on with nice long stitches. And then that way when I add the top of my bag to the zipper, I'm going to tighten up the stitches to make it really hold. That way I'm not having to worry about putting the two fabrics, one on the bottom of the zipper, one on the top of the zipper and trying to sew it together without anything moving. All right, moving on to the zigzag stitch. This stitch can be used for several different things. So you can use it as a decorative stitch along the edge of a uh, fabric that's on top of other fabrics to kind of do a mock embroidery type design, or it can be used to sew along the edge of a fabric to where it will not fray. Now I have also used it on my seams. When I'm making a bag, I have a seam allowance. And the seam allowance is the point of the fabrics that are from the stitch to the edge of the fabric. That's your seam allowance. So it can be half inch, quarter inch, three eighths of an inch, five eighths of an inch, all these different types of measurements. Well, the cool thing about a zigzag stitch is if you are working on a machine just like this one, it might not hold as tight as something like an industrial or in semi-industrial machine. And when you turn the bag right side out or you finish your bag, you might be able to pull at the seams and see some stitching along the inside of your seams. We don't want that. So what I've done in the past is taken a zigzag stitch after I've sewn the bag together and sewn a zigzag stitch along my seam allowance. That way it gives extra strength to those seams. So when the bag is finished, it, they won't, the seams won't pull away from each other and you won't be able to see those stitches in the outside seam. 
So our next stitch on our dial here is called a blind hem stitch. These are great for curtains, pants, skirts, any type of project that you are joining two pieces of fabric together and you do not want the stitch to be seen. You want the stitch thread to be invisible or nearly invisible. The blind stitching hides stitching underneath these folded edges. When you are using this stitch though on your machine, do not just zoom the fabric through your machine. Go at a steady pace, get out a tester fabric, fold them together and run the stitch through just to see how your machine is going to act. If you do it too fast, things might get jumbled up and get a little bit messy. So go slow when you're using this stitch. Next in line on our dial is this cute little decorative stitch. You can use this in several different ways, but I'm just gonna give you one idea. So you can grab a piece of ribbon and you can use coordinating thread or some fun thread that just really pops on your ribbon and run this down the middle, run two of them down the sides just to make some ribbon a little bit extra snazzy. You can also use this in quilt projects for a little bit of like an embroidery type design on top of your fabric. You can use it in bags where you're top stitching. You can use this as your top stitch. Just have fun with it. All right, and last but not least are these last three icons on our dial, and these are for our buttonholes. So on this machine, there is a four-step process to completing a buttonhole. As you can see in the icons, this number one, this will do the left side of the buttonhole. Then you will turn it to the number two, and that will do the top. And then you flip it to the last one, and it'll do the right side of the buttonhole. And then you have to turn your dial back one to do that last bottom stitch for your buttonhole. Now, I do encourage you to go ahead and check out your manual because like I said in the beginning, every machine is different. So your machine might have four icons. It might have different types of ways to do a buttonhole. Or like my other machine, it can't do a buttonhole. So it was some, would be something that I'd have to use another machine or do it a different way. So I encourage you to check out your machine's manual and see how they suggest that you do a buttonhole. Well, thanks so much for joining me today on Sewing 101 here on Auntie Tay's YouTube channel. I'm April from Tissot Sweet, and I'll see you later.